Hello, everybody. Welcome to a bonus episode of Shop Talk Live. I'm Tom McKenna, the editorial director of Fine Woodworking, and I'm here with a, a very special guest, uh, Kate Swan from the Florida School of Woodworking. Hello, Kate. Um, hey there. Let me just give a, a, a quick intro to uh, for those who don't know Kate. Uh, Kate Swan is a custom furniture maker and woodworking artist renowned for her exquisite textural and surface embellishments. She's the founder and director of the Florida School of Woodworking, where her passion for the craft helps her inspire and motivate students to achieve new levels of accomplishment. The school is also hosting Fine Woodworking's first ever hands-on event this February. Welcome aboard, Kate. Hi, welcome to be here. Good to be here. <laughs> well, um, welcome, well, welcome, welcome to, to be, be here. here. Welcome to the school. It's, it's early morning, I know that. And we're expecting snow up here, so I don't know what it's like wow. down in Florida, but I'm cold. Anyway, yeah. um, so let's... Sorry, let's, we've got 80 degrees here. Oh, that's a shame. I can't wait to get there in February then. So let us, uh, so for folks who don't know you, um, who may not be familiar with us, tell us a little bit about your woodworking journey. Where, where did it all begin? Sure. And so when I uh, lived in England, uh, my dad uh, grew up in post-World War II London, which was pretty grim. But a lot of people from that era um, obviously learned just to fix things. And so my dad was a fixer and a tinkerer with things. And we were always in the shed down at the bottom of the garden making stuff. And so I learned to sort of engage in doing things with him. And then when I moved to the States, I uh, moved to Portland, Oregon and had a house that was built in 1812. And it was a grand house, <laughs> but it was also the money pit house. Of course. So every weekend, you know, there was you know, a project that would start simply, but just evolve into this point that would end up jacking up the house, you know, to replace the foundation and mm -hmm. crazy things like that. So I started buying tools and uh, thought that it was really fun to use them. So I tried to make some pieces of furniture um, without, and it was, and shows my age here, it was pre-YouTube, um, so, uh, you know, this furniture that I made just, it just like instantly fell apart and it was completely <laughs> baffling. Um, but I had the wonderful opportunity to go to the Oregon College of Arts and Crafts, which is a small college just on the outskirts of Portland. And I went in the evening program there for about four years and, um, at the time I was taking classes from folks who were just really sort of well known in the in the mm -hmm. furniture world. I didn't know it at the time. They were just the gods to me that they knew how to make pieces of furniture that right. didn't fall apart. And um, ended up starting to build. Pieces stopped falling apart. <laughs> and then people started going, can I buy that? And it was the most sort of baffling thing, you know, that it was just like, I was kind of a little bit suspicious of them, actually. And, <laughs> do, and so, do, you, do you remember yeah. Do you remember the first piece you ever sold? Uh, I do, actually. It was a small side table. And um, I it's, it, it had been just sort of a labor of love. Yeah. And I sold it for $20. Wow. And I... I know. I thought that that was, I, I was astounded. Now, of course, <laughs> it cost me like huge amounts of money to, and time to actually make it. But right. that was the first moment that I was like, oh. Then you could call, you could call yourself a pro then. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well. So that $20 table began my woodworking career. And, and um, I went on to make sort of, you know, have a very sort of a decent side job while I was working in the full sort of dot com world. Yeah. And when I moved to Tampa, I didn't know anybody in the tech world. So I decided to go get my graduate degree from USF. And, but while there, I opened up a small workshop. And um, 20 years later, um, after opening up that small workshop, I've had a really wonderful, successful business of designing and building these remarkable pieces of furniture that I would have never have gotten to build um, without my, my client's base, as it was. So it's it's been so much fun. So how, how did you, what drew you from, you know, the northwest corner to the southeast uh, corner? 
Yeah, so everybody gets asked that question. So, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I so I um, was married uh, at the time to a great guy, and um, just shortly after nine eleven, he got recalled to active duty, and we had the choice, or he had the choice of Afghanistan, um, Iraq, um, or Tampa. And it was like, hmm. So I had a uh, had a two year old who's now nineteen, and so it was a it was a really logical choice mm-hmm. to come down here. And I've got to say that Tampa, over the last twenty years, has it is a night and day difference. It has really evolved as a city, and it's gotten quite exciting to be here with uh, all the developments that are going on. So it's it's gone from the sort of you know, not very, you know, attractive place to this very sort of happening city. And, yeah. and it's fun to live here. Well, we'll, we'll, well we can talk about uh, the city in, in a little bit as we start to talk sure. about hands-on for sure. Um, one question that, that just popped into my head was you're a fledgling pro furniture maker. How did you make the transition from that, from just building into, hey, I, you know, I think I need to teach? Yeah. So as we... As the sort of the the furniture making business started to evolve, I had a couple of people walk in and they would sort of stand around and 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 eventually they would say, "Can could you teach me how to do this?" So it started off with these very sort of onesie twosies, and um, uh, you know, I didn't even really know what they wanted to learn. So right. it was it was sort of not a, a particularly well orchestrated thing in the in the beginning, but. Um, it ultimately evolved over sort of a four to six year period where um, there was a consistent flow of students. And I would only teach beginning woodwork and only focused on power tools at the time. But once we moved into this new fabulous building that we have on Franklin Street, we have, I have a lot more space and significantly more machinery and the teaching has just evolved and evolved and evolved and we now um it got to the point where the volume of teaching that we were doing way surpassed the furniture making and it's very hard to be both a custom furniture making workshop and a teaching workshop the two don't really go together very well um yeah one makes money the other doesn't no. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not true. I had a really good, really good career. In- I'm just joking. And I, I got to be thankful for my clients yeah. in that. They were just, you know, like, you know, second family, but they, you know, they also have second and third homes. And- yeah. That's good. So, it's okay. it's <laughs> so okay. in terms of your school, um, is there uh, like a one or two, three sentence? Uh, summary of, of kind of your philosophy, your approach, like what do you, what's your primary goal? I mean, I know you ha- try to attract a lot of young students to your school. What, what's, what's your take on, on how you teach and, and what your, your ultimate goal is? So that's a difficult question for me to ask because I have a personal goal and then I have a goal for the right. school. Um, so the goal for the school is to build up the um, uh, furniture making, turning and carving uh, makers in the U S mm-hmm. um, and to have that be a um, inclusive uh, audience. And for that, that means uh, uh, a wider array, array of ages um a broader you know uh all gen you know both genders and more ethnicities and so reaching to a really broad audience of uh folks that would would like to engage in woodworking and for me personally the one of the reasons i started the school is i think that when people make things um, it makes for a much more dynamic, engaging community to live in. So this is a sort of personal mission. If I want right. to see people building stuff and making stuff, it's fun to see that. Um, it's uh, always intriguing and, and makes makes something uh, uh, a place to go visit much more uh, vibrant mm-hmm. when, when you have people making things. Right. Where do you, where do you find your students? Are they, do you find that most of the, the young, I'm assuming that probably the younger folks are more local, whereas some of the other classes may be more diverse in terms of travel. 
uh, so the we have both evening, weekend, week long, and mm -hmm. month long classes. And so, depending on those classes, we have a slightly different audience. But generally speaking, uh, our age range is our median age range is about forty. Um, we have forty five percent female, fifty five percent wow. guy attendance, um, and um, we have. A core, you know, an early smattering of, of international students as well, um, which has made life really interesting. So we have some South Americans, some European students, um, and uh, some some folks from the Bahamas coming up. So the, that's a you know the 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 number of female uh, students that you attract is is very high. Yes. What do you it, attribute that success to? Because that 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 is something that. <laughs> You know, we we talk about a lot, and and it's it's a topic that comes up every once in a while. Yeah. you know, women. So I think partly that I've made a really distinct effort to make to to make sure that all kinds of woodworkers are represented on the website because I think that a lot of that you can't be it unless you can see it. So if if women can see themselves on the site, you know, or somebody who looks like them doing something, doing a woodwork, they can go like, oh, well, if that person's doing it, that, you know, and they're five foot two and, and, you know, got short legs and short arms, then, then I can do that too. Um, so I think that that's really helped to have, you know, visual representation of um, the audience that, that are or the types of students that, that are welcome here. Um and then I think that that I, you know, I try to be personally front and center so that people can see that that when they walk in, um, that that there is a, a woman who can woodwork and they yeah. can see that happening and it's not it's a lot less intimidating. Right. Um, I, you know, personally, I've it's. I've always wanted to be evaluated on the merits of my skill and my technical competencies and my the artistry of my work. But that's um, when you're just getting into doing turning or carving or woodworking. You don't. You're not there yet. And right. I think for a lot of people, it is very intimidating, um, particularly women, because there's a sort of that that sense that that. You know, unless you grew up at your grandfather's knee, learning how to cut dovetails, um, you know, you can't get into this. Right. So I think just reducing the barriers through through visual and, and personal welcome is something that I've tried really hard to do. Yeah, and and you, I see you do it through your instructors too. You you have yeah. a very diverse group of uh, instructors, and you also um, encourage newer instructors to come, yeah. on, come on down, like Michaela Cree Stone, right? Right. So um, Michaela is, is coming and she, uh, so she's coming in April, I believe, April or March. Um, she's doing fabulous work. And I, I think that's sort of, you know, when you bring new builders or new makers in that it really invigorates the, the, the field. So just seeing what some of these new makers are doing and, you know, that they don't necessarily have a huge brand name recognition, but their skills are just phenomenal mm -hmm. they're just really exciting to see what they're doing um we also had miriam carpenter um oh, yeah. in a, um a few weeks ago um and i know that you've had her on the back cover you know she carves all yep. these beautiful feathers um and the dynamic of the class was fantastic it was very you know it was a hard working group i mean they just really you know worked hard but it is um, sort of this uh, uh, fresh faces, fresh energy, mm -hmm. um, you know, real openness to new ways of doing things and new styles that, that I think the school is sort of becoming known for. That's great. The other thing that, I, that I'm really happy to talk about, because it's something that we started to do ourselves, Fine Woodworking, at our most recent live events, we offer a, a, a veteran scholarship. So we pick a handful <laughs> of people to come out to the show. And, you know, it started a little bit of a buzz where we have people contacting, uh, contacting us asking, Hey, how can I contribute to this effort? Right. And your school now is offering two scholarships, right? 
Um, with this morning, uh, in fact, it was really kind of last night, we've added a third. Oh. So let me, t- can I tell you about those three? I'd love to hear about it. Okay. So the first one is called um, The Maker's Hand, and it is designed to, uh, it's, a, it's a grant for people under the age of 25. Okay. So we're trying to get younger, a younger group in. Um, to come and and try their hand. And we particularly are encouraging them to come to classes that are taught by uh, folks that they would never normally get a chance to study with. So Michael Fortune is one of our regular instructors. Um, Michael Collins also comes in. So um, having exposure to those is a, to those, that level of craft is very, very useful, particularly at a, at a young point in your development. Yeah, and those two um, guys in particular are just fabulous one-on-one instructors they are, and they take right, a real um, interest in the person that they're teaching, which is, which I really appreciate. Yeah, and, and we encourage, and I hope the instructors aren't listening, but we really encourage <laughs> the students to sort of like pick their brains clean, yeah. you know, just glean from them everything that you can possibly get because it's a wonderful opportunity. And and Michael Fortune's coming down to do an apprenticeship class shortly after the, or immediately after the hands-on Tampa class. So I think that that continuity between the hands-on and the apprenticeship is going to be a really for those people who sort of take the advantage of that, I think it's just going to be great. Um, and then, so we have the maker's hand. Um, uh, we uh, also have what we refer um, to as the helper's hand. And I had no idea what we should call this, this scholarship. I wanted to call it the scholarship for the people who run towards trouble. That's catchy. Um, <laughs> it's catchy, right? But there's really a lot, a lot of letters. Um, but it's it's for anybody in our communities that help others. So maybe it's your high school woodworking teacher who would never really get a chance to go to a woodworking class with somebody, you know, like Dixie Biggs. Maybe it's, um, you know, a community member who does, you know, what's the, what's the American term? Not Meals on Wheels. No, that, that they, the they didn't have that yet. That. It's it's yeah. Yeah. You know, but you know, you can see what I'm trying to do is, right. you know, it, it, it could be SEO, it could be veterans. Um, it's giving it, back to the community. It's giving back to yeah. the community. And, and there are a lot of people out there who really love woodworking as a hobby and want to engage in it further, but they're just not in a position to take a class. So that's what, what this scholarship is mm-hmm. about. Um, the other one, and, and again, it's got a really lame name, um, and that we just put together uh, just a few weeks ago and announced this last night, um, is a educational development grant. It's like, oh yeah, this is so exciting. But a few weeks it's ago, the EDG, we had, right? Uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> well, actually, it's, it's a real thing. It's called Women in Wood. Um, so a few weeks ago, we had an event called Lathe to Table. And um, it was a women-only event, which was kind of a new thing for the school to do. Um, As I said, I'm really, you know, I'm all about sort of, you know, making all sort of folks have have an opportunity. But we we had this event because I had a couple of women come in who said, well, I would never have come unless I'd seen a woman on the website. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had a couple of women who walked in and said, gosh, I was, I was really scared when I walked in. And I'm yeah. like, this is like the friendliest place in the world. So <laughs> we, you know, we put this event on and you made a cup, a bowl and a spoon um, and on the Sunday we had a great big meal where we used all of that and the brewery made a beer for us. And so, we, you know, we used our cup and it was a total blast. But at the end of it, um, the women got together and were like, Hey, let's have an auction. So we did. And we raised enough money to put the scholarship together. So now we have a scholarship for any, any woman who from 15 years of age on up, who would like to learn how to turn, carve, or learn how to do furniture making. Wow. So um, it was a very impromptu auction, but, you know, God Beer bless hat. those like, women. They just, <laughs> like, they rocked, you know. We, we sold all sorts of, uh, auctioned all sorts of strange things in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Piece of scrap wood, yes. Uh, um, well, so beer, beer helps, right? Beer, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, 
what, what, where do people go to apply? Where do they get more information if they want to dive in deep and actually uh, get sure. an application so, for these? So the first, the, the third scholarship will be listed out there on the website pretty shortly. Right. Um, but they can go to schoolofwoodwork.com and there's a drop down on the main menu, um, which they can, can go through, which says about, um, and they'll find the scholarship link listed on that. Okay. Well, and then, or they can just drop us an email so they can email me at kate at schoolofwoodwork.com. That's easy. Yeah. I like that. Hey, I'm going to get back to a little bit more diving into your, your, uh, woodworking, um, who would you say is your biggest influence in the craft? I mean, who, who inspired you to dive in and, and are there any makers today that keep you inspired that make you want to try, you know, new and different things? Uh, yeah. So the, the answer to that is I'm a, I'm a gleaner. Um, I look at what lots of makers are doing and I, and I pick things from there. Um, so, uh, a while back, I uh, went to a class that was being taught by Betty Scarpino and, and I can't say this last name, Susan Sharon Doherty. Okay. <laughs> Good Irish <laughs> name. Um, and Sharon was doing pyrography and I thought that pyrography, it, it was really cool. Plus it was fire and yeah. It was, yeah. It's hot, yeah. So, <laughs> so I started sort of learning how to burn from that, um, and then recently I've been uh, more recently I've been studying Michael Cullen's work, and his, it, it, you know, he does these all these wonderful boxes, but he's got these the particular boxes he does, and he's got this these wonderful forms to them, mm -hmm. you know, the the they particularly look like sort of boats or vessels or sails, right. um, and uh, you know, I, I really love those. And um, Tim Coleman um, is uh, another um, person I love. So, funny story about Tim at. Uh, fine woodworking um up in massachusetts in march i was sort of sitting at the the banquet and i was sitting next to a couple of guys and i was telling them sort of about the school and yeah. you know saying it's nice to be able to be here and meet meet various other makers and and how i used a lot of the makers yeah. um uh as examples to the students of of you know right ways and wrong ways to do things and this gentleman sitting next to me said, Oh, you know, so, um, you know, what do you do? And so I pulled up one of these, the pictures of one of these pieces and, and, you know, was comparing and contrasting them to another. And, and, and fortunately the one that I was speaking most positively about, he was like, Oh, you know, he, I was like, you know, this piece is really great. Because he was like, and, and it's made by Tim Coleman. And he goes, yeah, I'm Tim Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, right there, screwed it right up. So, anyway, so I do like Tim Coleman's work, um, and I know I was like, oh, um, and then also uh, Brian Newell. He, oh, yeah. his yeah. work is just it blows me away every time I look at it. I just sit back and go, maybe when I'm ninety. You know, I can do something of that caliber, but yeah, he, he's one that I, I just really I love. Yeah. What are you, what are you, what are you building now? Um, so I'm, I'm building some secret things cause I, I can't build in front of the students cause otherwise they, they, they want to have a class on that. And sometimes I just kind of leave little, little secret time away. Um, so it, it's, it's really kind of lame it's these, these small vessels um that tell stories and um uh, all the vessels are a little bit different but it's a combination of carving um different the selection of different woods mm -hmm. um, a little bit of burning and a little bit of color work so um they're sort of like little they're little stories, each and of themselves, and um, they tell the story of the person that I'm making them for. Cool. Sounds so, great. Well, yeah. that's what woodworking is all about, making things for people. Yeah. Well, partly. Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. I make things just it's to just, burn. It's just all about us, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, what here, – here's this is going to be kind of a, you know, a non sequitur completely, but um, what would you consider – 
the three tools that you couldn't live without today? Ooh. Um, so I know all the hand tool guys are sitting there going like, she better say a hand tool. <laughs> uh, I'm like, no boundaries. Uh, no boundaries. No boundaries. Okay. No judgment. All right. So I really love my um, pyrography um, burner. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I, I think I would take that to a desert island with me. Um, I love my spoke shave. Mm -hmm. um, I, the, the, the sort of physicality of using that, the pat the ergonomic body movement is just such a very sort of satisfying thing. You don't actually have to make anything when I'm using right. it. I just kind of like, right. you know, do you like have, doing, do you have a yeah. flat, a, yeah. is it flat um, bottomed or, or a, a curved sole? It's a curved bottom. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and ben Ben just hollered and hoot. He's he's dancing in the corner right now because he loves his <laughs> his curved sole spoke shape. <laughs> it's just it's just a thing of beauty. Um, and then I uh, I have a a fourteen inch joiner <sighs> where it's just bliss to use. It's you know it's it's like hot knife through butter. Cut you know just makes the most beautiful surfaces. And I know all the hand tool folks are just eye rolling, but yeah, it's just I couldn't take that to the desert island with me, but I. Yeah. Well, you could. It, it wouldn't float, but yeah, well, yeah it wouldn't know. float. You, you could know. cook on it. I could use it for the <laughs> aircraft landing kind of thing. So, so all right, here, here's another. This is this is very interesting. Since I I had been to your shop um, a few months ago, and um, you have a a dog. What what's the importance of having a shop dog? Oh, Sally. Sally. Um, <laughs> Sally. Yeah, she sleeps a lot now. She's getting to be a little old lady dog. But I think so so you know, dogs are like having a whole nother really nice person in the shop. Um, <laughs> and there are I think the the students love having Sally around. It, it, it's just somebody that that, you know, I have no idea how, what percentage of people who own dogs uh, maybe maybe that's it would be a good survey of how many woodworkers have have dogs yeah. um but it's it adds sort of this really she's really mellow she protects us from the evil doers who walk have the audacity to walk down the street um <laughs> and plastic bags that blow past as well that's also an important very dangerous thing. very dangerous um but yeah, it's just sweet and funny, and and you know she has various beds around the shop. She also um, is the founder of the Salio Clock, um, and the Salio Clock is something that we've done for uh, about eight years now. Where um, where there are pools of sunlight that shine on the floor, she'll come and lay on the floor in that pool <laughs> of sunlight. So for the last seven or so years, we have written next to her the date and time. Um, and put a label on it of Sally O'Clock. And so now through the whole entire or different areas of the workshop are, are like a sundial and you can track it year by year. And now you can look at Sally kind of where she is in the shop and tell the time. <laughs> so she's our clock. Um, so I, don't know, I love having a dog in the shop. She's getting a little old now. Yeah. The idea the idea of getting a puppy. Oh, God. You know, it was like, I don't know that I can do that. Sure you uh, can. <laughs> yeah, but I want, I used to have a dog called Chocolate Joe Henry. And Chocolate Joe Henry was a Newfoundland retriever cross. Wow. It was a big That's boy. That's a big dog. It was a big dog. Big poops. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you you got to cut that down. <laughs> and, um, you know, he was great. And I'd love to have a big dog again. But it's like, you know you know they like take having, up a lot of space it's like having a child it's like having a child or a yeah. teenager in the case or, of a big dog yeah yeah but joe <laughs> was funny joe was a funny dog all right now here here's i heard this um this vicious rumor that um the only reason that michael cullen comes to teach at your school is that you you get him his favorite pencils is that is that true <laughs> <laughs> this is true you know he i <laughs> I had heard this vicious rumor too that you know he was very particular about his pencils and, um, <laughs> and managed it? to 
so what are they? Yeah, I know you're going to ask me what they are. I, do, I have I, one. Uh, it's have it's one. The, the, the Blackwing 602. Yeah, the Blackwing. You know? and, I, and I made a fundamental error and got him some sort of Blackwing sort of – sort of an anniversary one and, uh -oh. and um i looked at it and it, i looked at it and he was like oh. <laughs> and uh, first of all he was sort of like a little bit surprised and then he was like well we'll have to try this <laughs> and, and it, was so <laughs> it was a great moment so <laughs> that's, um, that's but we also try to give our instructors when when they when they're well behaved um just something that's really <laughs> sort of individual and, and significant to them so we uh, we work on secret gifts, as it were, awesome. secret Santa gifts. What about the ones that don't behave? <laughs> they, they don't get a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's get to uh, let's get to the uh, the hands on event coming up in yeah. February, uh, February first through the third. Um, I, like I said, we came down a few months ago to, to kind of scout out all the venues where all this stuff is going to be happening. But, you know, one of the reasons I, I wanted you to come on is that you will be able to describe the whole neighborhood and the whole, uh, school with an energy that I just can't match. So first <laughs> let's, let's talk about the neighborhood. You mentioned a little bit before, um, it's this, it's this really, uh, I can't remember what the name of the, the, the neighborhood is. Um, yeah, the Yellow Brick? Yellow Brick Walk? Yeah, is that what it so, is? So the neighborhood is called the Yellow Brick Row. Right. Um, it is called that because we have a series of buildings of which we are part of that were built in the 1920s and they were made out of this lovely sort of creamy yellow brick. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole row now has um, – uh, historic designations, uh, you know, national, we're on the National Historic Register. Um, so it's sort of really these sort of very, you know, retro buildings with a really good vibe to them. And the school is situated right in the middle between a uh, crafty uh, coffee shop that called Foundation Coffee that brews this really kick-ass coffee i mean it's 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 you're gonna really get fired up with that we'll have to keep and ben away from that yeah it's, 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 <laughs> that's like i had some one time and i was like Ooh, yeah, you know. um and then on the other side of us is a brewery um so and the brewery is just an amazing place they build these really custom brews they won numerous national and, and local awards and they have these awesome beards i mean the the you know they they are truly sort of this uh you got the whole millennial vibe there but they're <laughs> very crafty um they are going to make a special beer for uh hands on tampa um and we get to name it so you know, i don't know how we're going to do that but maybe we'll We'll call it the Tom beer or something. Um, yeah, I don't think that's going to work, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we we have some uh, some catchy titles ready uh, ready to rock yeah. out. So uh, there's also uh, uh, various sort of like little crafty things up and down the road. So we have Cafe Hay who uh, make these phenomenal pressed Cuban sandwiches, um, and uh, they use very sort of locally sourced Cuban bread to do that. And because we have a big Cuban um, uh, population yeah. here, uh, we have uh, Oceanic, which has been there for years and years and years, and they are um, an Asian grocery store. And I swear, you go in there, you don't know what anything is. It smells really interesting, <laughs> and you just buy things, you know, and and try them just just because you have no idea what they are. It's all in it's all in Asian writing, so you know. <laughs> I usually, you know, buy buy people that for their birthday present, and 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 then we all have to take one no thank you bite. <laughs> I'm not sure, well, I'm not sure if they even sort of supposed to be things that you eat, but we try them. Um, and then uh, we have uh, uh, MMA Fighter Gym um, just across the street from us. So if anybody's planning on needing to work out, you know. We want to watch that. Well, maybe um, maybe so. there'll be some sort of side event. You know, we can take on the instructor versus instructor, like a cage match of some sort. Cage match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll all work out some angst that way. Um, 
And then just a little bit um, on the other side of the this, uh, street from um, the brewery is the halls on Franklin. And the halls on Franklin are, uh, it's a food court, but they're all local sort of crafty eateries. Mm-hmm. Um, and they make everything, uh, you know, by hand there. And it's just sort of some really fabulous dining. So um, it's, it's a, well, neighborhood's a little, it's not very um, polished. Um, we are definitely a little bit, you know, gritty and bohemian. Um, but there's a lot of really crafty things mm-hmm. going on here where people are very engaged in in their passion and in what they do. And and it's it's just a perfect location for us. So we are right on the edge of downtown Tampa. Um, we are maybe 15 minutes from the airport. Um, very easily accessible oh, yeah. uh, via the interstate, and you know, so it's a it's a great location. Yeah, and there's also the the is it the Riverwalk? Is that what it's called? Where the oh, restaurants yeah. so, are? Where... So just uh, a block and a half away is the Riverwalk, and the Hillsborough River winds its way through downtown, and we have a a walk that follows that river all the way along. You can take the pirate water taxi up and down from one restaurant to another, um, and there's also a very they have. Uh, um, uh, renovated a trolley barn, which is a it's a huge thing. But the you know the old street trolleys that used to run up and down, like not that you, were, you know you didn't see them, I didn't see them, but you know they renovated one of those barns and uh, have turned that into a sort of a huge event space, co working restaurants, uh, a little bit of retail. Um, so it's it's you know that as I was talking earlier about how Tampa has changed, it's very lively down there and and there's a little park there are always bands and music playing so it's very cool and great food Tampa's cool and i never thought those words would come out of my mouth but tampa is cool (laughs) well you got you got um you know an irish guy like me to try alligator hush puppies (laughs) <laughs> I told my wife when I got home and she's like, really, you did that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm cool. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with it now. I'm with it now. So where, uh, you know, we have all these uh, cool places to go while folks are down um, yes. enjoying the school. Uh, let's talk a little bit about where the actual classes are going to be taking place. Sure. I know, you know, a good portion of it will be at your school, but we're taking advantage of some uh, kind of neighborhood nooks and crannies to uh, to, to do some cool classes. And, and they're, they're really sort of iconic buildings in, in and of themselves. So um, we will have um, two of classes here at the workshop. Um, we'll have uh, Michael Fortune in the main workshop and then in the uh, lathe room, um, we will have Peter Galbar. Um, and then uh, we will have um, uh, Mary Mays down in a, at the uh, end of our little row of buildings um, doing carving. And she's, so she's going to be in the, in the, uh, the locations called Cavu. I'm not exactly sure what Cavu stands for, but they're going to be down there. And it's a beautiful brick brick room with you know full full windows um very sort of wonderful space to be yeah um uh dave fisher is going to be in the covered courtyard um it's sort of quite a romantic courtyard and then you know it's all sort of these beautiful vines and things growing um but they'll be doing bowl carving with an ads um commonly known as whack-a-bowl um, <laughs> uh, in, in that open area. So they, you know, they all make a wonderful mess. And, and I, I think his space is probably the most beautiful one. And you can get a, um, you can get a, a, a mug of mead. Or and bog, you can, it, yeah. So, so, um, <laughs> so we'll have that going on. And then uh, just uh, across the, the cobblestone um, alleyway, um, is the Rialto, and the Rialto is an old uh, theater and showroom um, or show stage, um, and we will, they have renovated that space, and so we'll have uh, Dixie Biggs doing uh, power carving in there, Michael Cullen um, doing the bandsaw box making, and uh, Jennifer Anderson's going to be doing the hand plane work there, and also Kelly Parker will be in there as well doing design work. Now, I know that Kelly's group is going to go off and um, they're going to do a field trip and go out and find design inspiration and come back and then work on making models and so forth. So um, we've got two sort of really 
you know, fabulous buildings all within steps of each other. Um, so it's going to feel a really sort of fun community type environment when we right. have everybody here. Yeah, and it's it's Tampa in February. Yeah, right. So and shorts, those... t-shirts, <laughs> and you know, you might have to wear your sunglasses. Ah. Sorry about that, everybody. But yeah, it's going to be rough. I'm going to have to pack shorts. Rough, you know. And, yeah. I mean, well, well, you know, I don't, I don't know that we'll, you know, I would need sunscreen, but you know. Oh, I need a sun. I need a sun suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah it's you, a perfect time of year to, to come down. Yeah, it's, it's going to be great. I mean, the lineup is is top notch. Like you mentioned, Kelly Parker, Michael Fortune, Dixie Biggs, Peter Galbert, Jennifer Anderson, Dave Fisher, Mary May, and Michael Cullen. That's a pretty that's a pretty strong lineup of teachers and Isn't uh, it? You inspiring know, it's, people. It's having them all in the same place, just and being able to flow from you know see what other students are doing and what what's going on in other classrooms now. I am, I'm instigating cross group rivalries. Oh um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, it, it won't, it won't be sort of over at the MMA gym, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll be good. You know, don't worry, Tom, we got, we got this. Well, that's right. I've got, I've got a chain mail suit. I'm good. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's, that's, this is a pretty exciting event. It's our first ever launch of it. And uh, we're happy that you're involved and you're a big, um, supporter and pusher of this for us and yeah, it's, uh, it's really inspired us to, to, to dive in. So um, thanks for thanks for talking about it and thanks for being on and, and kind of giving us a glimpse into who you are and, and your school and what it's all about. Great. It's been really great talking with you guys. Well, we'll, uh, we'll see you in a, in a couple months. All and right. Again, Take folks, care. If you want to uh, sign up for, for hands-on, Go to our finewoodworking.com slash hands-on and we'll put the link up and, you know, register today. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. 